Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, running Java on devices like the Raspberry Pi. Um, a little bit about gaming. So we're going to talk about how to do how to do game emulators and performance tuning of gaming, and a little bit about 3D printing. Sound good? Mm, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so um, first a little bit about um, my day jobs. I'm the community manager for Java, and um, I help run the app Java Twitter handle together with Elon Poyer, and we also work with Java user groups and we work with Java Champions, and we work with the JCP. Um, and as Sebastian said, you have to say something to, to get a sticker. So my goal is to make sure everyone leaves here with a, with a sticker, hopefully. OK, so first, user groups. There's over 300 Java user groups in the world. Who's, who's a member of a Java user group? Who, who belongs to? OK, ev everybody here? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, so which which Java user group do you belong to? Um, Java user group. What was it? Name? Name? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very good. Hiroshima Java user group. Okay, sticker. Okay. Um, so, you guys are all members of Java user groups. Excellent. Um, how many of you guys are Java developers? Oh. Oh. Only three Java developers. Come on, come on. All right, we have more Java developers in the room. Okay, so what Java technology do you use? Name a Java technology that you use. Yeah, yeah. JPA, okay, good, sticker. Yes, very good. Um, okay, and there, your guys are in good company because there's worldwide, there's over 9 million Java developers. There's also 150 Java champions. Does anybody know the name of a Java champion? So Java champion is an um, advocacy um, group. It's independent. And these are people who talk about Java technology. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. So there is actually one Java champion in um, Japan. So Sakuraba? Yes. Well, yeah, Sakuraba is a Java champion, right? Yeah, yeah. OK, good. Sticker. Sakuraba-san. Yuichi Sakuraba. Um, oh, well, you, you, got, you got a second sticker. <laughs> Okay, and there's also 50 jugs contributing to the JCP as well. So, does anybody know what JCP stands for? JCP. Okay, well, let me make it simpler. Does anyone know what the first letter in JC? Can you guess what the first letter in JCP stands for? J. Very good. Okay, sticker. <laughs> okay, and then the, the other letters are community and process. So J JCP is a community process. All the specs, which Sebastian was talking about, those are created by the JCP, and Sebastian's on the um, JCP expert group, JAXRS expert group. Okay, so that's all good. We're going to talk a little bit about um, video gaming, which I think is even harder than doing Java community, um, and specifically emulating the, the Famicom, or as in the US, they made it the um, Nintendo emulation system, NES. So who, who had a Famicom growing up? Anybody have Famicom? Famicom? Oh, yeah, 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 OK, a few people. So so name a game that you have, like one game you play, you like. Yeah. 
Mario Brothers. Ah, oh, very good. Okay. So, Mario Brothers is a, a very good game. We're actually going to play that in a little bit. <laughs> um, there were 61 million units of the Famicom and the NES sold worldwide. 826 different ROMs for testing. The, the chipset used a Rico chip. It was a Motorola 8000, 68000 series processor which had 3,510 transistors. And to do accurate emulation of the NES is actually quite hard because you have a CPU, a PPU, a pixel processing unit, and an APU, an audio processing unit. And they all have different clock speeds. So they would play tricks with the timing and to accurately emulate it, you need 92 million different synchronization points per, per frame. So the hardest part of all this is testing all of the games. So I had to do a lot of work playing video games, very difficult. Anybody recognize this? Oh, this is Ninja, Ninja Gaiden, but I think in the Japan it has a different name. Ninja something. Okay, uh, how about this one? Ninja Puno? Rockman, Rockman, yeah, very good. Okay, so in the US they renamed it to Mega Man. But yeah, in Japan, Rockman. And how about this one? This is actually a Super Famicom game. Gradius. Oh, very good. Okay, so after you play all these games, then finally you reach Nirvana on video games, which is this code. Who, 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 knows, who knows what this is? What did you say? Yeah. What, what's this code? Anyone know what this code is? So what is this what does this code do? Okay, so I can't understand. You have to tell me if what they're saying is right. <laughs> okay. But does, uh, does anyone remember what this code's for? Oh, what did you say? Something special. Okay, yeah, so it's cheat code. Okay, good. So I'm going to challenge you to play a game. So you, kn you know this, right? No, no, who knows the Konami code? Come on. Who's a gaming expert? Who's, who's our gaming expert? Who, who's the best at video games in the audience? <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, 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 Gradius. Okay. So, well, we're going to we're going to do this slightly um unfairly. So, you, you like Super Mario, right? So we're going to play Super Mario. So pass this to him. So that's, that's, your, that's your gaming system to play. No, 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 no. You get to play. And we're going we're gonna to do a speed run through the first stage and see who's, who's faster. Okay, so we need somebody to count down. You want to do this, Ito? So, yeah, 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 that's fine. All right, so, so wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right, so. so. 
Alright, let's go. So this... Oh! <laughs> I already died, so you have a slight... You have a slight advantage. Playing on the keyboard is not as good as the real controller, I think. So I'm playing... Um, the emulator running in the development environment. And that's the, the final ca console. There's a secret here somewhere. Oh, there we go. One up. Oh. And fire. How you doing? Almost there. All right, let's go for the flag. Maybe, maybe this will be my first win in Japan. Every single user group I visit, I lose. <laughs> so, how are we doing? <laughs> All right, so let's give our let's give our attendee a round of applause. Very good. Thank you for playing. Um. So you can play a little bit more and then pass it around so everybody gets a chance to to try a little bit. Um, oh, you won as well. I hear the flag sound. So give give folks a chance to try it. And this is a 3D printed custom designed case with a Raspberry Pi inside of it. And it's running a full Java software stack. So it's an emulator written inside of Java. So this is what the... Um, device looks like. So we're going to talk a little bit about the electronics inside of it, and then a little bit about the software, and finally about the, the case, the 3D printed case. So inside of it is a Raspberry Pi. Who has a Raspberry Pi? Oh, oh nobody? Oh, yes, you do. OK, very good. Have you done any interesting projects with your Raspberry Pi? Not yet. Only what? Twitter app. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Raspberry Pi has a small ARM processor in it, um, USB, Ethernet. You can hook up an HDMI screen. Um, the hard drive is an SD card. You hook it up to power on micro SD, and it has GPIO pins. The GPIO pins, I think, are the, the most interesting thing on the Raspberry Pi because you can hook up electronics like accelerometers, GPS, um, buttons or switches like we have on the controller for this. So that really makes it um, more of a hobby electronics suitable device. Does anybody know what these two headers on it are for? Hmm. Okay, well let me give let me give some hints. Sebastian, hint. Camera, very good. Okay. <laughs> and the the other one, I'll give a hint. Oh. So what's what's what do you say? Yeah, yeah, screen. Okay, very good. Sticker. So the ones for a display, you can hook up a 7-inch display to the Raspberry Pi, like a little LCD screen. The other one's for the Pi camera, which is a little pinhole camera you can use to capture um, video. So they're both very good. So for the device, I needed a small screen. The Raspberry Pi screen is too large, so we had to decide on a smaller factor screen. And some of the different options you have are composite, display. So composite is the old RCA jacks. Not very good quality and it consumes power to convert back from a composite signal. HDMI is what I would recommend if you're testing your Pi at home. You can hook it up to a TV or a monitor. Um, very good quality and speed, but if you're doing a small device like this, you need a converter from HDMI back to an LCD signal. So that consumes a lot of power. SPI is a serial peripheral interface, and this is not that fast. It's very slow. 
um, only 10 to 15 frames per second. So um, to, a to accurately emulate the NES, you need 60 frames per second. So this isn't good enough. And the last one is device tree support. And the way the device tree support works is you put a file in to remap the um, the CPU headers onto the GPU for the LCD outputs. And then you use this board, the KIPA, to map this to an LCD header, a 40-pin LCD header. Um, so the advantage is since it's emulating, since it's basically reassigning the LCD pins, then it acts just like you attached a, a dedicated LCD display. So it's very fast and it's low power. Um, you can use the standard 5 volt VCC off the Raspberry Pi to power your display. The disadvantage is that it uses all of your pins except for six plain GPIO pins. So, how many, how many buttons are on the NES controller? Eight. Very good. So, if you look at this, we have um, A, B, start, select, and then four buttons for the directional arrows, because each of those needs one button for different directions. So, this is a problem. Not good. Um, if you play the first stage of Mario and you beat the boss, um, actually, I let my daughter play this for the first time when... Um, she got the, we built the device, and it was her first time playing Mario, and she got this message, and she was very, she was very sad. Because modern video games, if you beat a world, there should be like dancing and celebration and lots of rewards. And this is, this is, um, <laughs> this is not very rewarding. This is... <laughs> so this is, this is a good example of classic video games, like they, they, they're humbling because they're very harsh. So that's why, you know, we, we grew up with character and our, you know, our kids are spoiled. And this is how I felt when, you know, I realized I didn't have enough GPIO pins. So I had to come up with a solution to solving this problem. We have six GPIO pins and we have um, eight different buttons. Does anyone have any ideas on how you can solve this problem? Okay, so one, one trick I used was since you can't press left and right at the same time on the controller, I mapped it using a couple diodes. So when you press start, it simultaneously presses left and right. And then select simultaneously presses up and down. So this way, um, you only need GPIO pins for up down, left, right, A, B, so six. And then start and select don't have dedicated pins, but they press other buttons simultaneously. So um, there's other ways you can do it, but I think this is a nice hack. It requires relatively little wiring and lets you solve the problem. Um, there's one case it doesn't work. Can anyone think of the situation where this this doesn't work. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, so you can't you can't press right and left at the same time. Uh, okay, so I'll let you guys think about that and we'll come back to this. Okay, so this is the wiring for the Kippa. This is the button layout of the buttons on a little breadboard controller I made. Um, you solder the pins to the Kippa board. Um, I would recommend heat shrink wires if you're doing this yourself. And then you have a working, a working display. So now we need some software to run on this, right? So for the software, we're gonna use the half NES emulator which is a full implementation of the Super Fam or the Famcom code base. Um, it emulates any Famcom ROM. And um, it's an open source project developed by Andrew Hoffman. 
So he works for the University of California, Irvine. Um, very smart guy. He did this in his spare time to create an accurate emulator in 100% Java code. Um, here is the remote deployment for running from NetBeans on the Raspberry Pi. And then you have the, the game up and running on the Raspberry Pi on a little, you know, little game controller made out of a breadboard. So we have it working. The only problem is the original half NES code base only runs it at um, six frames per second. So not, not very fast. So we need to get it to 60 frames per second because that's the refresh rate of a um, standard display. So I um, did some work in NetBeans to do some optimization of the code base using the profiler. And here are the different performance improvements which I, which I tried. Um, so the first one is I rewrote the code base. It was using Swing Video with X Windows. And I rewrote it to use JavaFX. So who, who, who's used JavaFX? Oh, oh, anyone? Okay, so next time I come, we do JavaFX talk. <laughs> <laughs> but so JavaFX is much, much faster than, um, than Swing. And it does hardware acceleration. So the Raspberry Pi has a very good GPU, so it uses, takes advantage of hardware acceleration, and also has direct frame buffer support. So you can bypass X windows and write directly to the graphics frame buffer. So very good for performance. Um, there were also, for the synchronization, the or, um, original code base was per pixel, and I changed it per line, which is slightly less accurate, but it's much faster because you have less synchronization points. Um, I also modified the bitwise helper functions. So in the code base, um, Andrew had a few helper functions for setting, clearing, and checking bits. Um, so if you have a long and you have a bunch of bits in it, you're checking different attributes on, he would pass that long to a function and say, check the eighth bit and set it or clear it or return the value. And I modified it so there no more helper functions. It just uses a um, um, logic operator. So it uses the um, and, or, um, XOR, and bit masks together with those. And I wrote a regEPS, which goes through the code base and replaces all of these cases. So that helped quite a bit. Um, extracting PPU operations. So there were a bunch of operations and graphics that were performed once per pixel or line, and it could be pulled out to happen once per frame. So that helped a little bit. I replaced some of the um, double math with longs um, for the audio processing unit. So you don't really need doubles since the original hardware actually didn't have floating point unit in it. Um, array access. Um, I tried using unsafe. Does anyone know what unsafe is? OK, so this. It's a good thing you guys don't know. Don't use it. <laughs> so unsafe APIs are meant for internal use by the um, JVM. And they allow you to get outside of the memory model and access things directly. Um, eventually, these APIs will go away. So it's not guaranteed to be forwards compatible. And it turns out it doesn't actually help with performance because the just-in-time compiler is quite good. So I was trying to avoid array bounds checks. And the just-in-time compiler is good enough at performance tuning the code itself that it doesn't need you to directly avoid array bounds checks. I also tried replacing loops with system array copy. And this also doesn't affect performance because there's an intrinsic for this, which automatically does this. And the last thing I did was I modified the audio to only flush the buffer once every three to four frames. And that helped quite a bit because audio buffer flushes are quite slow on the Raspberry Pi since it uses pulse width modulation audio. So you make some performance improvements and then you're up to 60 frames per second. And now we can work on printing a um, 3D case for the, um, the gaming console. So who has a 3D printer? <laughs> 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 so
So I, I think this this office is very nice. They should they should have a 3D printer for for use by visitors. <laughs> I would I would recommend it. Um, the 3D printer I used is the Ultimaker, and the Ultimaker is a um, it it does what they call um, FDM fused deposition modeling, and it takes a um, a roll of plastic. This is corn-based plastic PLA. Um, it heats, it pushes it through a tube, um, and then heats it up at, uh, with a hot end to 210 degrees Celsius. And then it draws layers of material, um, kind of layer by layer, and lets you build complex shapes and geometries for, th which is very good for prototyping. It's slow, so it's not good for manufacturing, but it's very good for prototyping new things. So a lot of fun, great way to waste time on weekends. And um, even if even if you don't have your own 3D printer, you can often find a um, make like a make lab or a make make maker space um, that has it, or maybe a university. Sometimes universities have 3D printers. Um, and they'll often let you borrow it or use it for free. Um, so you can find people who, who have it. Or, you know, maybe one person in the jug has a 3D printer. So when we were in uh, uh, Okayama, one of the guys at that jug has had a Flash Forge 3D printer. Um, and now he has lots of new friends. <laughs> So this is the software I used to design it, um, Autodesk Fusion 360. It, um, they have a free student license and they have a free license for hobbyists. So I would recommend it. And it's a lot easier to use than um, SketchUp and other programs which aren't really designed for 3D modeling. You design the sketch dimensions and then you specify operations like extrusions or rounded edges and then you um, um, you can build very complex structures with this and then modify it and it'll recalculate the model automatically. This is what the inside of the case looks like. Um, here are the hinges, which um, are failures. So I had lots of failed designs. Originally, creating hinges in plastic is very hard. Originally, I had a, um, a hinge design, which is a 20-sided polyhedron. And then um, when you rotate it, it would snap at different positions. But I gave it to my daughter, and then she would, she would play with it, open and close it. And eventually, it was round, perfectly, perfectly round. So the, the hinge um, wasn't a good design for plastic. So this is, this is Zelda 2. Very traumatizing as a kid to see that screen over and over again as you die. And you have to restart. Like a classic old school game, they um, send you back to the beginning of the game every time you die. Um, so this is the new hinge design I came up with. Um, so it uses a, wh wh what shape is this? Hmm, hmm, who doesn't have a sticker? Uh, uh, you don't have a sticker yet. So what's this? what's this shape? So what's that shape called? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Triangle. 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 Okay, very good. Sticker. So this uses two triangles which are circumscribed. Um, and they're slightly different sizes. There's a small gap. And so what this creates is a slightly oblong triangle shape. And this triangle shape, when you, when you rotate it, um, it only wants to stop at um, a few different positions. And at the other positions, it will um, produce a little bit of friction. It'll bend the plastic. Um, so this is a diagram which shows the interference here. 
The red areas are the overlapping material when it's um, causing friction and it'll bend slightly. And the, um, the other areas um, are, are not overlapping. So this is 28.254 cubic millimeters of overlap. And the nice thing about this sort of hinge design is that since the plastic is bending, it's not um, sharp edges, it can open and close many times without breaking. So the, the, um, the RetroPie, if you try opening and closing it, you'll see that it has a little bit of friction as you close it, and then it snaps shut. Yeah, so if you push it a little bit farther, it stops. Yeah, and then it's when it's fully closed, it will also stop. So this is Cura, the slicing software that's used to design, to go from 3D model to the um, instructions for the printer. Here is the um, actual print being built up layer by layer. Here is a um, all of the different parts needed for it. So let's see, uh, 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 do, you, do you have a sticker yet? No, not yet. Okay, how many parts are there total? Twenty. No. <laughs> do you, do you, you want to take a shot? <laughs> eleven. Good. Okay. Right. Eleven parts. Okay. So there's eleven pieces total. Uh, it takes about. 24 hours on my printer to print all the parts. Here's the uh, buttons being assembled. Um, the case, you put the Raspberry Pi in the bottom. Um, you put the battery in. The battery lasts about six and a half hours. M it was my daughter's requirement that it lasts a long car ride. Here is the um, little power boost from Adafruit that charges the battery and also provides a power switch for the device. Um, here's the KIPA and the LCD screen. More plastic to hold the buttons in place and the speaker and amplifier board. Um, this is how you fit the cable through and you coil it up so it doesn't break. And then finally you attach it to the LCD screen. This is where the pins go in on the side. And you see this little hole here so what do you what do you what do you what do you think you didn't get a sticker yet right? Okay, what do you what 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 do you think this hall is for? What's that hall? What do you think that hall is for? The little the little cutout here. I'll show you another hint. Look at this guy right here. Yeah, very good. Okay, sticker. Yeah, yeah. So this this holds the hinge in, and it goes down and locks it in place. So the whole case is designed so you don't need screws, you don't need um, any other hardware. It just like fits together like a jigsaw puzzle and stays stays assembled. Okay, sticker, 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 sticker. Yeah, I think we have everyone with a sticker now. Okay, very good. You remove some of that material. Um, you put the top on, and then finally you're off and playing the RetroPie. So we have one more um, video clip. Anyone play Metroid? Ah. Oh. So this is the, the ending to Metroid. And if you get all of the items in the game, then you find out that um, your, your Metroid character is actually... Well, your character is in a spacesuit the whole time, so you don't really know this. But your Metroid character is actually a um, a girl, not a not a guy. So this is one of the earliest video games which had a female main character. And um, I think this is a good example for the software industry. We mean need more women 
doing programming. Um, it tends to be a fairly male dominated industry. This is my daughter who's a young hacker. She does helps me with workshops for Lego and Raspberry Pi. Um, and with young kids, the ratio of girls to boys is quite good. Maybe 50, 50, 40, 60. Um, but then as you get older, like in high school, the number of girls tends to drop off in technology. So I think it's good to encourage more women to, to get into education. You can find out more about the project on Thingiverse or in the book, Raspberry Pi with Java, which we're going to give a few copies away now. Okay, so you've got, you've got a copy there, Sebastian. And then remember we were talking about, where is it? Uh, 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 this one. So we were talking about this, this guy with the left and the right and the start. And I asked you guys, what, what scenario, what set of buttons do you push where it doesn't work? There's actually like a failure case where it, it doesn't properly work. So whenever you press start, it simultaneously presses left and right. So anyone want to take a guess? Yeah? Double click? No, that works, I think. <laughs> But it's a good guess, yeah? Yes, good, book. Okay, so if you press start and left at the same time, it, th it thinks you're pressing start because it can't distinguish between um, start and left. Like left, when you press start, it looks like left and right. And if you press left in addition, it still looks like left and right because you're holding all the buttons simultaneously. Same thing, if you press start and right at the same time, it has a similar problem. Um, and there's one game which requires this. So Mike Tyson's punch out requires you to use the, um, I think the start button for uppercut. So when you press start and you do like uppercut, you can't dodge, so it's, it breaks the game. Every other game it works fine, so very good. Yeah. Okay, and you have one, Sebastian. Um, yes, no, well, it, it will in a second. All right, so we have a second copy of the book, which I will give away if um, you answer the question of Python. So if you my, uh, remember my presentation correctly. Um, in my live coding, I showed you a Juxores component, a Juxores class, which helps you to create URIs based on the JAXRS information of your project. And specifically, I used one class to create the URIs, one JAXRS class. Can you tell me the name of that class? Book resource, no. Uh, book resource was a class I wrote, but uh, can you tell me a name of a Juxores um, class, which is used, a, a Juxores component, which I used to create the URIs? URI info, very good. Ah, good round of applause. Right. Okay, excellent. So thank you guys very much for coming to the, um, the night session um, and joining the night hacking tour. Please follow us on Twitter and follow some of the, the remaining tour. We're going, wh where are we going tomorrow? To Osaka. Osaka. Yeah, yeah. And then we have, we're going to go all the way up to Sendai, go back to Tokyo, and then fly to Okinawa and um, Sapporo. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. Yep. So you want to say the last word, Ida? Give him the mic. はい、え、以上になりますありがとうございました。えっと、oh, oh, yes.
、えー、OTN の、えー、オラクルテクノロジーネットワークが提供する Java 関連の情報です。えー、Java マガジン<笑>、えー、日本語で提供します。これ、もともとはあの US で英語で出されているものですけども、日本語に翻訳して出しています。それから、えー、Java デ,デベロッパーニュースレター、えー、メールニュースですね、を配信をしています。それと、えー、もう使いていただいていると思いますけど、JavaSE の日本語ドキュメント、JavaSE8 を出していますし、えー、もちろん JDK ダウンロード、えー、NetBeans 等々、ソフトウェアダウンロードサイトも、えー、ございますので、えー、こうした Java 系の情報をこれからも更新していきますので、ぜひご活用ください。はい、ということで、えー、今日はありがとうございました。えー、とわざわざ、まああのこちらの広島にもお邪魔しましたけれども、えー、まだまだあの日,本日本全国回っていきますので、えー、2人にぜひ拍手で今日はあの感謝の気持ちを、えー、<笑>ということでありがとうございます。Thank you very much for <笑>はいありがとうございました。<笑>